they ask you uh, as a cipher. You pride yourself, of course, of having a nose for trouble, having an uncanny ability to preemptively solve the kinds of problems that might arise on these streets. Is that fair to say? Yes. I, th- I think a nose for trouble or when I need to, a nose to avoid trouble. Tonight, I'll obviously, we'll be doing the second. Uh, I'm thinking we'll mostly just be escorting drunk revelers who aren't safe to bring themselves back home. But if anything else should happen. They tip you off to a problem that they would like to see solved. And the way it's worded, in no uncertain terms, this is something that is a sensitive issue for the sensates. But if some well-meaning ciphers happened upon it and took it upon themselves, it would be no harm, no foul. There is a particular party that is supposed to kick off just after anti peace tonight, uh, nearby in the Fest Hall district. And I have to go to Fantasy Name Generator and get a bar name. <laughs> Unless Nodal has another one just in his pocket. What kind of bar is it? Never mind, I found the perfect one. I like this a lot. This mm-hmm. it's it's <laughs> it's Ferocity's favorite bar. It's the catnip coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's Boo. pretty good. Not the catnip cafe. No, the catnip coffee. All right, coffee. C O F F E E. That's the word coffee. Yes, I'm aware. I think I like the catnip cafe better. Just don't like the drink. It's a coffee shop, not traditionally a bar, but after hours during, uh, it's sensate owned, and after hours there are in-fight only groups that meet there and such a party is supposed to kick off tonight after anti peak and the tip you get is that this particular party is thought to get very violent and out of hand and it's nearby it's a couple blocks away from the fest hall okay yeah i'll bring my group over to uh, that area then okay by the time you arrive the uh the coffee, <laughs> I love it. Uh, the coffee is still open for usual business, and a lot of sensates here. So, what do you do to case the joint? Um, is there an obvious proprietor or someone in charge? Uh, glancing at it from the street and having no prior knowledge of this particular coffee, uh, you wouldn't know. You'd have to go in and ask or investigate. Okay. I'll have uh, two of the people who are with me, one sensate and one of Dwarf's men, stand outside and, uh, like, at the entryway. I'll tell the others just to kind of make their way along the streets, back alleys, just take a look. Don't do anything yet, unless you obviously you need to, but okay. just find out what it looks like, and she'll go inside. As you give the orders, the the uh, rest of the other two or three of Dwath's men kind of pair off with the ciphers. Dwath's men having a lot of uh, experience with this, and the ciphers needing some leadership. And you go inside, and it's a very posh kind of cafe. I mean, this the smell of uh, pastries is almost overwhelming. This sweet odor hanging in the air. Uh, delightful conversation conversation surrounds you. You can see it's a very upscale sort of place. You ask Baron for the proprietor, and you're eyeballed by by one of the uh, employees at the coffee, and they he tells you very politely that. If you're looking to order, you'd best do so quickly. There's only an hour or two until anti-peak, and at that point, anybody not able to show sensate colors will be asked to leave. It's a private party. So completely dodged your question and offered you a drink. Do you, uh... Does, this party happens every year, right? And... 
The employee actually looks a little impressed that you know that. <laughs> Considering that you're not a sensate and you're also dressed like Serenity. And Tell me about what happened last year. And I mean, he doesn't go into great detail about the goings on, but you can tell he's very, he has a pompous attitude about it. It's a very mm -hmm. elite party and only some of the wealthiest sensates are able to attend. That's the word he uses, able to attend. Uh, and he says that the coffee had the great pleasure of hosting Factal Aaron Montgomery three years hence. Is there anything uh, in particular that the uh, that makes this establishment so good for that? I mean, obviously, it's fine for most things, but and he tells you that you know if you work very hard, perhaps someday you can afford to partake of their wares, and you will know for sure. Unfortunately, the sensory stones in the fest hall that contain the experience of drinking one of their brews is in the sensate-only area. He says that fake apologetically. So what's next? Um, I'll order a drink. Okay. Get a cup of coffee. Just stand at the uh, edge of the room and watch for a little bit. I uh, go ahead and mark off two gold. Okay. For a brew. That's a damn good coffee. It doesn't scorch you on the way down and poison you and make your life horrible. <laughs> Better be a venti for two gold. <laughs> and it's an excellent brew. Delicious. I'm assuming Serenity just drinks it black. Yeah. So you're going to just kind of watch the place. Watch the place unfold. I'm not, I'm not taking a seat. I'm just trying to find a quiet corner to watch from you. Well, there's no seats to take. The place is okay. packed. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation roll. Everyone's a devil. <laughs> you have five. Five? Watching business as usual here, you kind of don't see how this place could erupt into violence. Something seems off to you, but just watching the place, you're not gaining any, any information. Uh, after I finish my drink, I'll go back outside. Mm -hmm. I'll flag down one of the guys I have watching the uh, place. One, one of the dwarfs or one of the ciphers? One of the dwarfs. Okay. And I'll tell him to go back, talk to those sensates again, and tell them if there's, ask if there's anything specific we should be on the lookout for, or if there's anything we should say to get in, or at least get one of us in. You go back to the, the man you spoke to, to at the, the To the sensate we spoke to before, yeah. And then she'll take his place where he was uh, on watch. Okay. And about 20 minutes later, he returns. And he has a scrap of paper in his hand. And he hands it to you. And it's just kind of a crumpled, folded note. Mm -hmm. And the note simply reads, Well... To use this password only if you can find no other ingress. Okay. The password is lying dove. Okay. And then Dwat's man looks a little kind of grim and says, I think we may have stumbled into some infaction fighting here, boss. Is this really our purview? I mean, we're going to keep them from killing anyone. That's my main objective. And he, he nods, seems satisfied. Uh, 
Is among the uh, people that Dwarf has sent, is there anyone in particular that I think looks a little bit tougher, a little bit more of a veteran who can handle themselves better in a fight? They're all about equal. I mean, they're the rough equivalent of maybe like a level one fighter. Okay, I'll take the guy who I had who I had sent to get the note, and I'll go back inside. Okay. And after a few moments, uh, you're greeted again. So, you know, my curiosity is just too great, and I was wondering if there's any cost I could pay, you know, not as a sensate, but just as a private individual in a faction pretty amicable to your own to uh, stay around and see this marvelous party. And I'll uh, kind of reach into my purse and uh, rattle the coins about a little bit as I say that. How much is Serenity willing to spend on this endeavor? I mean, do they look... Does it, look, does it look like, do they make any response or like, I don't, he's eyeballing your purse okay. intently. I'll, uh, I'll pull out five platinum pieces, five platinum. Yep. And his eyes get really wide and he says, uh, my apologies, madame. I did not realize I was speaking with a woman of quality. Uh, get a drink for myself and my friend here too, please. Another one of those coffees, or would you like something stronger? And he kind of looks bewildered, and he <laughs> says, I'm not feeling thirsty, boss. Two coffees, thank you. Just, and then I'll lead in a whisper, just look, you just act casual, just try and blend in. And he nods. He's taking his social cues from you at the time being. After a few moments, the employee returns with two coffees. All right, well, just find a nice place in the corner. Keep our eye on the room. And bear with me one second. I'm getting a lot of use. I, these single sessions, I get a lot of use out of fantasynamegenerators.com. <laughs> <laughs> I always make NPCs in advance, but I always end up having to roll a few on the spot as well. So you, you never Are know. you saying you don't anticipate what we're going to do? Because that just I feel like I feel like on Twitch, if this one is going to end up, or I'm sorry, on YouTube, this is going to have to end up being labeled who doesn't get into a bar fight this session. <laughs> I kind of like that, yeah. Give Killian time. <laughs> There's a bar. There's a bar in his future, yes. Okay. And I do have to apologize for a mistake that I made earlier. Because uh, I clicked the button to get tavern names, but I still have the drink name page open. It didn't load very fast. Catnip Coffee is a drink name, not a tavern name. But we're keeping it, because I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fun. Whatever. Would Serenity have any idea what a Rakshasa is? Probably not. I mean, because in universe you've heard the term before, but you have never actually met one face to face. Yeah. Okay. I uh, have Nick. If you're still on, I'm here. Picture duty. Okay. Yeah. I can look at it's Rakshasa. The one with the hands. <laughs> yeah, the one. I might with as well hands. do something this session. <laughs> You're told that Madame Adalia would be delighted to speak with you. <laughs> and you're led into a back room of the cafe. Mm -hmm. You and your muscle. And reclining on a very uh, opulent bed of cushions is essentially a cat woman. Dressed in a very fine gown. And there's a very heady odor in the room of strong incense burning, and it kind of makes your eyes water to step in. And she watches you step in. She introduces herself as Madame Idalia. And she uh, asks. If she may be so bold, what has she done to rise to the attention of the noble transcendent order? 
No, nothing in particular. We're just here to make sure that everyone has a good time tonight. She says, and your intention is to pay a handful of platinum coins for that assurance? Well, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to rock any boats. More than happy to pay the cover charge. Just want to make sure that nothing that goes on is too, you know, messy. She asks how much the Fest Hall's lapdogs have offered to pay you to rock this boat. That's <laughs> right, you will just laugh. And she very pointedly doesn't laugh with you. She says, whatever it is, I'll double it. This is making your uh, little mercenary man look very uncomfortable. <laughs> And what's your answer? I'm sure, I'm sure you don't need any trouble here, so we'll just, you know, I'll just have my coffee, stay in the corner, be nice and quiet, maybe talk to a few of your guests, and that'll be that. And then she says, and of course, you'll be clear of the premises by Auntie Peak. Is that when the party starts? That's when their private party starts, after Auntie Peak. I'll just kind of shake my head and say, no, I, I'm, I think we're going to have to stick around all night. That answer doesn't please her very well. So she again makes her offer. What if I triple it? I'm afraid I'm not working for money. A so woman it's a little bit hard to triple something like, you know, the safety of the public. A woman of principles. The most dangerous sort of person in Sigil. She tells you, she offers to give you some advice. that this is a job you should walk away from. If you're not getting paid and you're doing this of your own recognizance, she assures you nothing of violence will happen, that it's a private party that many of her factioneers are jealous that they are unable to attend and that it's become almost a yearly tradition that they attempt to foil it here at the cafe. Do you really think I'm going to do anything like that? I mean, I'm just going, like I said, I'll just stand in the corner, have my drink. I won't even interrupt your guests if you don't like. Nothing she bad asks, happens no, for me. Nothing bad happens for you. She asks, what about the six men you have in the street? They'll stay on the street unless something ha goes down. She well, waves you, you over with... Your, Go ahead. You wouldn't want your party to be ruined for next year with the reputation that one of your guests got drunk, wandered out into the streets, and some, you know, barmy Ivor stabbed them, because obviously everyone here is going to be wearing some pretty nice chink. But again, we're just, we're just here as a precaution. We don't want... We would prefer to do nothing. As strange as that may sound coming from a cipher. Sometimes nothing is what you must do. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. DC is... Well, let's just see what you roll. 21. Ooh, that's pretty good. I mean, you can't get better than a 20. Actually, I think 17 is the highest number. 17 is the highest number. You're right. I stand corrected. Forget about it. You feel the madam pushing into your mind, looking through your thoughts, looking for lies, and you just instinctively shove her back out. Now, well, what's your response to that? Knowing that she's trying to probe around in your brain. 
So you know, just, she'll act completely non -blust. Okay. Now make another wisdom saving throw. Thirteen. Thirteen. She stands up. And she begins speaking a language that you've never heard before. And just with your uh, experience watching Riot in particular work, you realize she's speaking a magic spell. Before you have a chance to react to it, you fall under the influence of Dominate Person. Which means you are charged, charmed by the Madam. Yep. So you have Still a telepathic link telepathic. with her, as long as you're both yep. in Sigil. Uh, she can issue commands to you, which you must do your best to obey. And you do not repeat the save every turn. You repeat the save when you take damage. Yep. Her first command is to uh, dismiss your minion with orders that they disperse from her street. I'll uh, tell him to go tell the others. Uh, take a... Just wander the back alleys of some of the other streets. We've got this one. He asks, are you sure you're okay, boss? Yep. He nods. Her second command is to turn over the contents of your purse. <laughs> okay. Now, how much is actually in there? Uh, I believe at this point, 5 platinum, 98 gold, 61 silver, and 80, 56 copper. But go ahead and erase that. <laughs> and she says that she will make use of you tonight. And that's a fun cliffhanger. Riot. <laughs> Where's Riot commissioning these mastheads from? She figures <clears throat> she's got business in the ladies' court tonight anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, may as well swing over by there and do it. Okay. So you're going to look for... Uh, like, the ladies' ward wouldn't have any, like, craftsman's shops or anything, but you might be able to find, like, a I trader to... Yeah, I guess it might, make, it might make more sense to go to the Guildhall ward then. Okay. Well, you could go to the ladies' ward and, like, arrange, like, an off-sigil importer if you want these to be constructed off-plane off and then brought in. That might take too long. <clears throat> I'll just go to the Guildhall ward then. Okay. Uh, what quality of craftsmanship are you looking for on a scale of mahogany to ten? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a seven. A seven? Okay. I will point out that Mahogany's thing is that he has very varying quality. Thank you. <laughs> and does Riot have <laughs> varying quality? Uh, does Riot have any particular uh, instructions as to how these mass heads should be made? Like a particular type of wood? Or... What did they tell me? Did they give me any instructions? Uh, they said they wanted it to be in the image of a, of a uh, flayed barracuda. Mm -hmm. and they want it sanctified. Like, they want it to actually work yeah. and carry Osprim's divine protection. Yeah. Did they, like... Do you have any, like, any size specifications? Do I know how, how big this needs to be? Uh, we'll say that they did. Um, okay. Their ships are relatively small, but this Commodore has a fleet of them. Yeah. So it would be seven. Okay. Um... For wood, what's good wood for? I'll mention to the craftsman that while I'm not familiar myself with the astral plane, whatever materials that they use should withstand its atmosphere. I, I don't want it rotting away in whatever passes for the air in the in the astral plane. And the craftsman. Uh, you see just a look of experience on his face when he hears the terminology you use, and he says, you've never been there yourself, have you? Not yet. He leans in real close. He says, don't answer if you don't want to, but are you working with the pirates or the mind flayers? 
And uh, Riot just says, well, not the Mind Flayers. Let's just leave it at that. And he holds up his hand. He says, I don't judge. I've done work for both. He tells you not to worry. He knows precisely what needs to be done. He's an old hat at this, and he uh, tells you his name is his guarantee. What is his name? That's good. Well, I'll know when I go back to yeah. uh, good old fantasy. It's not a very good guarantee, is it? Right. His name is Trust Me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he hands you his That's card. a really good Trust single me. name, though. It, it just says Trust Me and has like a winky eye. <laughs> <laughs> and then he winks at you. Trust me is a really good sigil name. Jonathan, trust me. <laughs> no, first no, name trust, me. last name me. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I just, just does I accidentally does rolled on the uh, on the disobedient son eat. <laughs> <laughs> I just rolled on the uh, Rosex Postpolitan name generator here, and okay. it came up with Norbert Rusiel. Norbert Rusiel. I'm more interested in the table you rolled on. What table did you roll on? The check. There was expert poison. <laughs> he asks you if you know primarily whether the vessel will be manned by primes or regular people. Regular people. <laughs> Okay, uh, it falls within the price range, the three hundred per masthead, and he tells you that the work can be completed at a rate of probably one every two weeks if you want it done correctly. One every two weeks. Mm-hmm. How long? Hmm. Right, we'll say. Hmm. Let me speak to my associate one moment. She casts Sending. Okay. And uh, casts Sending to Zez. Says, um, my my Woodwright can have the first ready in two weeks. Is that acceptable? He says, so long as you make good on a show of good faith, but the work is being accomplished within the week, he will not release the information he's holding. Okay. Um, I ask Norbert if I can have a receipt and some some proof to show to my associates that this is being done. He says, of course. He'll write you one. He's a little uh, taken aback that he feels you have to ask. He says, it's not that it's not that I it's not that I mistrust you. It's just I'm working with some people who I'm, I'm the I'm the intermediary for some people and they need reassurances. But not a lithids. But not a lithids. If it was lithids, they would just read my mind and be done with it. He says, word of caution. The gift may well read your mind and be done with it. Are you dressed in your uh, fineries at the moment? Yeah, and my robes. Okay. Riot just thinks to herself and then touches her nose and her brain. So how much do you pay him up front? Um, right will show him all the money and say you can have so what is it I'll, I'll pay him 600 up front okay with the promise of the remaining what is it the, yeah the remaining what is it um, 1500 yeah 1500 right. Math uh, I'll hard. give you the, I'll, I'll give you the rest of the 1500 once I've seen the first masthead He takes five of the 600. Okay. Leaving you with one. And he tells you that he's happy to take your coin. Mm -hmm. All coin spends. He advises you to take the discount he's giving you and spend it looking into your patron. Make absolutely sure this is something you want to get into. Mm -hmm. Then he tells you he'll get to work immediately. All right, and I'll see you in two weeks. What does Riot do with the rest of her evening while everybody else is getting into bar fights? 
<laughs> uh, Riot feel like she's got a party to attend. It's it's fest time. So you're going to go to the ladies' she ward, and she doesn't miss fest time. Are you going dressed in your fineries? Uh, no, I'm casting seeming. Casting seeming? Okay. Yeah, I want to fit in. So what do you seem like you are? Uh, a noble one. You say noble man? Noble woman. Noble woman. Might okay. Might have swallowed that a bit. Because they play on the other side this year. We'll see where that goes. <laughs> You're trying to get into like the ritziest party imaginable. Right. You right. can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of give you two options here. Option A is you're just looking to get into well basically the option is political or not because on one hand you can try to get into a party like where there's gonna be a lot of faction high ups hobnobbing uh where it might not be the ritziest party in town but it's the most connected the other one would be you're just looking for the biggest party and not looking for a place that might have political connections uh i'm looking for i'm not necessarily interested in political connections uh, tonight okay so tonight's just all just all fun, no business. Maybe a little bit of business. Maybe a little bit of business. I'll see if I can convince somebody to to fund us. I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to try to scam somebody out of some money. Okay. <laughs> so what you should so do? So not Kelia. <laughs> what you should do is uh, just email them and say that you have a box of gold you're looking to transport <laughs> out of Easgard. Right. So we had telemarketing scams, and now we got email scams. What else can we can we make jokes about today? So, on a scale of one to ten, how much risk is Riot willing to accept? Oh, uh, an eight. An eight? I mean, if we're all going all in tonight, right? I didn't even get asked, and I got attacked by an entire devil. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I like fair enough. I guess I'm just assumed to be a 10. <laughs> you did say, let's go to the devil bar. And then you said, I'm having a great time at the devil bar. <laughs> oh, well, let's also, let's also be clear. Mahogany had a great time at the devil bar. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a hell of a story, you know? And, Riot, on a scale of 1 to 10, like, what is your moral compass tonight? Like, do you care who you scam? Or do you, like, want to take a Robin Hood point, like scam somebody who deserves to be scammed. Yeah, let's do, let's take that. Take approach. that, okay. When you say deserves to be scammed, do you mean in riot that's, sense? Uh, yeah, and, and that's a real broad category of people to riot. Do you have something in mind, Riot? Hmm. Like, who are you... Like, mm, no, nah, not really. I'm just looking for somebody gullible looking. Okay. Keelian. <laughs> no, this is to pay Keelian back. I can't steal Keelian's own money to pay Keelian. That sounds like exactly something you would do, and I don't want to hear you say that it's not. So how? <laughs> what, what's the target? What's the target here? How much are you looking to scam? I'm looking to scam a cool thousand. A thousand gold. Yep. Okay. And how is Riot attempting to do this? Like, are you going to walk in with like a business pitch, or are you just looking to charm the pants off somebody? Like, slip in the se slip in the sheet, slip out with a thousand. Yeah, I think that's that's a better way to go because, like, what I want is for somebody to like fall over me and give me expensive stuff in a, in a bit to try and win my favor, and then later I'll, later on I'll go and sell it. Fence it, I guess. So you're looking like to get like a like a, a, just a, an expensive gift that you can turn yeah. around and hawk for a thousand gold. Okay, right. Make an insight check. Make mm -hmm. it a disadvantage if you decide to drink heavily. Yeah, I probably won't do that. Okay. Because, like I said, I'm on. I'm here on business, so. I don't want to dull my faculties any here. You said a little bit of business. And you're just drinking business. slightly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this works out to a 12. A 12. Old, fat, rich, Sigillian businessman. An mm -hmm. honorable governor type. He wears a monocle. 
like that guy. Mm-hmm. And you see him spend the first half of the party schmoozing with... Uh, he's a human himself, but he seems to prefer the, uh, shall we say, half-breeds. Mm-hmm. You see him uh, getting very flirtatious with mostly Tiflings. A couple of Genasi over the course of the night. Uh, but nothing too heavy. And you're thinking, I can work with that. Very okay. notably, before you approach, you can tell that he's married and that his wife is not here. And before you decide to approach this man once and for all, you do notice that he seems to have the attention of a second man in the room. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting all burpy all of a sudden. Uh, that just seems to be regarding this fat businessman during the course of the night. And he is also drinking very lightly. And now you can play it however you want. All right. I'm going to try and size up this second man. Okay. How do you do that? Just stand back and get a sense of him or go engage him in conversation? Yeah, stand back and get a sense of him. Make a perception check. Okay. This is what she's good at now, yeah? Yeah, 16. 16? To you, this man reads all business. It doesn't look like he's having a bad time at the party, but he's not schmoozing, he's not drinking heavily, he's not partaking of food, he's very well dressed, uh, he has a decorative sword hanging at his side, but he's definitely here for a purpose, and the purpose has to do with this fat businessman you're sizing up. <laughs> and over the course of the night, you catch him once or twice, his eyes drifting over to you as well. You never lock eyes with him, but by the time of the night where you realize that he's been watching this guy, this guy has also realized that you've been watching his guy. Okay. Just looking down my spell list here. No, I get you. I get you. (laughs) Should have come to the devil bar with us. (laughs) (laughs) Mog, he just shows up. He's like, these are my devil friends, my devs. (laughs) (laughs) The devs. <laughs> and Wright decides to make that her approach. She's gonna go up to the uh, go up to the old man. Okay. And say, uh, "Don't look now, but I think someone has designs on you." Now, what is, does Riot look like a tiefling when she approaches? Yeah, but not herself. Gotcha. Because I don't want to be connected back to this later. Sure. <laughs> Who does, really? (laughs) And this man, just blush-faced, big, bulbous nose, uh, you can, when he turns and hears your voice, you see the drink slosh in his hands. And he says, well, I do hope it's you, my fine lady. And and right when he said, it certainly is. But, um... I'm afraid I, I thought I should act fast before some of the others in the room get a chance to make their move. Fortune favorites the bold, as they say. And he concurs very drunkenly. What's your intent with this man? Uh, get him in private. Get him in private. And how do you do that? Uh, whisper into his ear a few sweet nothings. Make and a... say, that man, that man looks all business. I just want to have some fun. (laughs) Make a persuasion check. Okay. All right. That'll be a 28. He looks over at the man uh, that you, I mean, you're acknowledging the business guy that you saw earlier, right? Yeah. Okay. And he says that he has no interest in men. But he's very amenable to fun. 
and he tells you, Alas, I am wed to the tumultuous Lady Glurdenstein. We're going with Glurdenstein. <laughs> Glurdenstein, okay. I'm going to write that down in my notes here. Glurdenstein. Lady of Pain. I, met, I wed her. And he makes a big show of saying how it would be not be befitting of a man of his honor and stature to betray the sacred vows that he said before the congregation at whatever temple he was married in, whatever god he observes. And, and he says looks, all of this like half jokingly. Yeah. No, but Riot look takes him seriously and looks scandalized and says, Oh, oh, of course, I could I could I could never dally with a married man. Of course. For, forgive me for besmirching your honor. I'll I'll go and seek my fun elsewhere. And oh then, dang. Do you actually leave? I think a few steps away, yeah. Hoping that hoping that he's gonna take this bait. And <laughs> More than anything, he seems to just be enjoying the spectacle. Uh, but to your surprise, he lets you go and walk okay. off. <laughs> All right. And what do you what do you do from there? How drunk did he seem? Your passive insight's pretty high, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's reasonably high. It's like sixteen, I think. You've been watching him drink all night, but you got the sense that he was putting on a little bit of a show. He's uh-huh. acting more far gone than he, for, more far gone than he is. And as you walk away, uh, planning your next move, you receive a message, uh-huh. as per the spell. I'm not sure, sure if you're familiar with it. There's a spell called message. <laughs> right. Yeah, I get it. And it's from the man who's been watching you both. Uh-huh. And he says. He might be persuaded to split his commission. I'll message him back and said, unless your commission is over 2,000, I'm not interested. Do you look over at him now that you know who's... No, the, I, I think we're, we're good conversing this way. Okay. How many times can message go back and forth before you're It's a cantrip. Slots? Oh, it's a cantrip. That's right. Sending is the one that takes cell slots. He tells you... Well, he said he was assuming you were... He apologizes. I'm sorry. I was... I assumed you were planning to... To swindle my lord here. Of your own volition. Mm-hmm. He tells you, alas, the commission is only 300. But you can take that in addition to whatever you take off money bags. And I'll message back, your lord? You're swindling your own lord? <laughs> he tells you that he was hired by the Lady Glurdenstern. Mm-hmm. Who wants to take over the estate, but can't do it legally unless he's found in violation of marriage vows. Only then (laughs) does she have grounds for legal divorce. Right, we'll mess it back say no more. I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) You heard me mention that P.I. joke earlier, and you were like... He alludes to a particular bedroom act that we will leave vague, Mm -hmm. you know, in the interest of good company. And he tells you that if you were to float that idea, you would have him wrapped around your finger. He also warns you that a divorce would absolutely destroy this man. He would be penniless, his business would be ruined, and he would have nothing. Riot, Mr. Beck, are you supposed to be talking me out of it? He tells you he just wants to make sure you know what you're getting into. 
All right. Let's see here. Let me check what dice side number is Riot's giving a shit. Oh, it turns out it's a D0. Oh, look at that. <laughs> no fucks given. All right. Um, Riot, his next move then is going to be to strike up a conversation. Let's see. Can I even do this? I don't think I... No, I don't have the spells to do this. It'd be, it would be great to strike up a conversation with a person who wasn't even there, but I don't think I can do that. Like with a projected illusion or something, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't have any spells like that. Okay. Okay, so what Riot's next move then is to wait about 10 minutes and remain out of eyeshot of Baron Glordenstein here. Okay, the good Baron? Right. And return to him. And, um, and smile and says, um, you had me going for a moment there. But I've searched this whole party and I know your wife's not here. And he tells you that he likes a woman who does her homework. It's indicative of said, beauty of mind as well as beauty of form. And Riot says, oh, I've done my homework on more than wife. And leans in and, and mentions the act. Shall we go find a bedroom? And he is very amenable to finding a bedroom. All right. All right, what kind of trouble are we going to get up to in this bedroom? I feel like we can elide some of the salacious details here. I, I'm picturing the, the, the scene in uh, Austin you don't have to. The Spy Who Shagged Me. Yeah. That's what I'm picturing right now. Is there like a, is there like on, on randomnamegenerator.com, is there like a disgusting sex move generator? I wasn't going to go look. <laughs> You'd have to go to Fantasy Name Degenerator for that. <laughs> So, <laughs> you notice that the other man, the PI, so to speak, mm-hmm. watches you go. And as you're leaving the room, seeing him out of the corner of your eye, you see him fade into invisibility. Mm. I know that trick. <laughs> Let's abstract this with just a straight charisma check. Okay. You know what? Make it charisma performance. All right, sure. Make it even easier for him, why don't you? can't believe. Right, I've also got a plus 13 in that. Oh, oh, it's only a 14. Oh, no. Only a 14? <laughs> That's a 1? Really? Only a 14? Yep. Okay. He does, in fact, bestow you uh, a gift. Uh, a lovely trinket of jewelry worth 900 gold. Okay, it's close enough. I set the difficulty at 15 and you missed it by one. I subtracted 100. <laughs> I wasn't expecting... <laughs> you wasn't expecting me to have a plus 13 to performance. Gotcha. Well, I wasn't expecting you to roll a one. I was trying to give you more than you were asking for. Yeah, that's fair. You're like, now I'm going to roll still a good night's work for Riot. <laughs> Riot's like, man, I need to join this line of business. Just and you are aware at some point of the PI being in the room with you. And Riot gives him a little message that says, like what you see? <laughs> he does not respond. <laughs> After the, uh, the uh, romancing has run its course, mm-hmm. I mean, the man is fast asleep, just snoring like a saw. How does Riot leave the party? Um, dimension door seems like a good idea. In a dimension door? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you attempt to make contact with the PI again that night? 
Um, did he give it? He didn't give me his name, did he? No. No. <laughs> now I'll do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. Okay. Keelian. I just want to say everyone is out having fun and Keelian is doing homework. He's going to the Hall of Records. Riot does want oh. to that very night. Turn turn this item this like this uh, bobble that this gift she got around. Mm-hmm. Just because it could go badly for her if she waits at all. So you're looking to just unload it right now? Yep. Okay. I mean it's worth nine hundo, so go ahead. I'll give you okay. the nine hundo for it. Cool. <laughs> everyone else having fun. Keelian doing homework. This is the worst. <laughs> double bar. So, Keelian. Going to the double bar. Yes. I mean, there's still like four days of fest left. Okay. <laughs> it's like it's like working the first night of AGDQ, but having the rest of the week open. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> Listen, how are you? I didn't even get to taste that girl. So. <laughs> how are you going after information? I mean, there's a couple ways you can do it. What were your thoughts on how to get this information? Uh, what do you mean? Um, like one way is you could just go in and buy it, just pay for it. It's just a business transaction. Another way right. is you can leverage your faction influence, uh, which isn't. I mean, it's a, it's a fourteen. Uh, another way is you could approach it as like an in faction splinter kind of thing, where you find an old contact of yours who's on Dar- Darkwood's bad side or something. And squeeze your way in that way. You, you're a rogue. You can sneak in invisibly and try to steal it. It's up to you. <laughs> let's start with... Let's start with faction influence, then. Okay, go ahead and make that roll. Let's see how this goes. Thirteen. Thirteen? I mean, you're looking for, like, 40 or 50-year-old records. Right. How much money are you willing to put into this leg of the journey? 200. 200. Okay, go ahead and yeah. mark that off. Uh, you managed to hire a bunch of clerks to work overtime, digging up some of these records. Do you tell them why you want them? Or do they need not concern themselves with that? They need not concern themselves with that. And is this something that's being done off the books, so to speak? For example, do they need to sign these records out? Are you are you do you want them to not leave a paper trail for Darkwood to find? If they can avoid it, but if they need to leave leave a paper trail, forge my signature. Forge your signature? Yeah. Okay, I want to make absolutely sure that I'm understanding this. Like, are you taunting Darkwood? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Like, we're no. talking about the Faded here. These guys are really good forgers. <laughs> All right. Let me make a note that that happened. <laughs> Darkwood finds it and goes, must not have been Keelian. He wouldn't be so stupid as to write his own name. <laughs> It takes uh, hours, the better part of the night. And I know I said eight, but it's ten, so whatever. Anyway, sorry, keep going. <laughs> it's still ten now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking into where this money was spent, and we're talking 50 years ago or so, a lot of these buildings don't even exist anymore. Uh, but they were essentially a lot of structures kind of on the border between the clerk's ward and the hive. Like if we look over here, Hmm. like kind of these roads here off to the side of the hall of records district, these would be like derelict buildings uh, from the hive. And I guess the idea at the time was whoever spent this money thought he was a philanthropist and was going to expand the influence of the clerk's ward into the hive. And Easily over a million gold was spent in this endeavor over a period of several years, uh, buying up all kinds of real estate, running taverns at a loss for years, uh, 
Hmm. Opening up a small stage house where they put on plays that were very entertaining. <laughs> uh, and it just oh looks like a God. bunch of dead end, like competing with each other. Like if you opened up two Starbucks's, like you bought two Starbucks franchises and opened them up next door to each other. It's kind of what he was doing, uh, running all these businesses at a loss and blew through this million gold extremely quickly. Uh, at the time, of wow. course, he was he didn't question any of the taxation procedures or anything. The fated gouged him. The sensates gouged him. He gave away lots of free drinks and entertainment. He basically threw a three-year-long party and then was destitute. And then after that, the hive immediately reclaimed the area. What a sucker. All right. <laughs> um... What about looking up anything about Abdurrahim Parak, whatever? Parak. However wrongly, I, however wrongly I spelled this governor's name. This the skeevy governor that you got the Abdurrahim. Yeah. Abdurrahim. Abdurrahim Harak. Do you, I mean that's something you could do on your own time while you're waiting for all these guys to dig around. Oh, okay. Then, or yeah. are you going to hire a clerk to do that too? No, I can do that then. Okay. Uh, keeps his nose clean. Uh, He's a governor, but you see in his background uh, several times where the Faded has given him a couple of nickels to lose a folder or a record here or there. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of clout in the courts. He's only like a mid-level clerk, but okay. he does a little bit of side business for the Faded here and there. Nothing so too terrible. Like, all right, so it sounds like I would have to go and find him to find out more information about this friend character there's one piece of information that sticks out mm. uh, very very interestingly almost all of the property he bought up and developed was in the area on the hive with the exception of one tiny squat stone tower in the lower ward uh, in a very smoggy district near to the foundry not a pleasant place to throw a party shack and a stipulation was left in the original purchase records that basically a trust was set up to continue to pay for this tower's uh, taxes into perpetuity. That trust still exists, and the faded still have numbers on it. And it's not a lot of money. The building's not used for anything. It's been standing empty that entire time. Uh there's just an account that pays the property tax on it. Huh. There's an address. Okay. Let's yeah. say it's here on Whitesmith Street next to the foundry. All right. Yeah, it's just a small three-story stone structure. Uh, the latest note that you see on the file, the last time a survey was taken of the area, some 12 or 13 years ago, just says overgrown with razor vine. And that's it. Okay. All right, now that we're an hour late for our break, <laughs> and I've had to uh, make use of the bathroom that entire time, I just keep going. We, we will uh, take a short break. <laughs> this is going to wreak havoc on the video editing later because I'll have like three one-hour <laughs> slots and like one 40-minute one at the end, but whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take 15. Get our snaglins or whatnot together. Okay. Let me put Elizabeth on screen. Oh, she's still there because last time I streamed was last Sunday. That's handy. Thank you, AGDQ. And when we come back, we will find out what happened to Serenity at the coffee house. Oh, yeah. All right. 